Equality 13. Mm -hmm. What do you mean when you say divine truth is felt, it is emotional? Yes, yeah, so I feel this again is a very important quality of God's truth in that it is not something that you can intellectually accept. It's something that has to also be emotionally accepted. A lot of people seem to believe that they can intellectually accept God's truth and then put, try to put into practice God's truth in their personal life. And that's actually not possible. Mm -hmm. It has to be an emotional experience. And, and if you're trying, then it means you're not going through the emotional experience. The soul is automatic once we go through the emotional experience. It's automatic that we practice God's truth once we've gone through the emotional experiences of clearing away the soul's error. And if we have to try, then it means it hasn't been an automatic process and therefore it can't be God's truth. It has to be, it's not yet accepted in the soul as God's truth. It might be accepted intellectually, but it's not being accepted in the soul. There's also this issue of having to try mm -hmm. uh, with regard to God's truth. The reason why we have to try is because we only have the truth intellectually. And this is going to be a problem through, for the rest of our life if we're not careful. And we can only progress to a certain degree by trying intellectually because the actual soul change has not occurred. And the only way a soul change can occur is something has to be felt. So error has to be felt and truth has to be felt. There is no other way that you can have a truth enter your soul without it being felt. And there's no way for an error to leave your soul without it being felt. Mm. So all of God's truths must be felt before they can be truly acknowledged as a part of your own experience. Before that time, you basically just have to try intellectually to understand it. But there is going to be some major problems with that because the intellect isn't designed to understand all of God's truths. The human intellect uh, usually exists within the spirit body of the person and, and the spirit body is only able to intellectually understand God's truths to the point of the sixth dimension. So any truths that are above the sixth dimension cannot be understood without feeling them. Mm -hmm. And because, for that reason, divine truth must be felt. It is an experience that we have to have rather than just thoughts that we have. And this is what I feel or where I feel the majority of the Earth's religions and religious practices have gone wrong. Most of the Earth's religions have focused on the intellectual acceptance of God's truth or attempting to intellectually accept God's truth. And it's quite obvious that they haven't emotionally accepted God's truth because if they had, then they would not war with each other they wouldn't promote violence. They wouldn't uh, even argue with each other about their different differing opinions. They would present what they believe, perhaps. But uh, if divine truth was felt, what eventually happens is everyone finishes up with the same belief. It's like everybody will eventually finish up having the same belief about gravity. Mm -hmm. And gravity is one of God's truths. And so, so from a physical perspective, we accept that everyone will eventually finish up having the same belief about things like gravity, aerodynamics, and all the other scientific principles of the, of the universe. And, and it's time that we started to understand that we will eventually have the same beliefs about love, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll eventually have the same beliefs about God's universal truths relating to the spirit body and to the soul of the individual and the emotional content of the individual. So we'll eventually have the same belief systems. It doesn't mean that we'll have the same expression we'll have the same belief systems. If we are differing in opinions to others and, and differing in our opinion to God's truth, mm -hmm. then of course it's impossible for us to have the same opinion as God on any matter. And it, this is something that we need to do. We need to come to accept God's opinions on the matter. And you're saying though that the only way we are going to do that or the, the world globally is going to do that is through a feeling process. Exactly. So it's not a matter of just hearing something and adhering to a doctrine. No. The emotion, the truth has to be felt within the soul yes. of the person, not even the spirit body, but the soul of yes. the person. And a person, if you understand that, that love is an emotion, to actually feel the sensation of love, you have to feel an emotion. Mm -hmm. So, so and, and if we understand that all of God's truths are loving, then of course it means that all of God's truths are also emotional. They have to be felt. Yeah. So, so while 
we um, might come to accept certain physical truths intellectually, in the reality, we also come to accept them emotionally. So pretty much everyone on the planet at the age of two to three years of age, by that stage, accepted the truth about gravity emotionally. Mm -hmm. They realised that every time they tried to bend the laws of gravity, some hurt occurred, some emotional experience occurred, and so they've come to accept in their soul the truth about gravity from an emotional perspective, from an experiential perspective. It's the same with all of God's truths. To, to come to terms with all of God's truths, we are going to have to experience every single one of them emotionally. Mm -hmm. We can't expect to go through a process of intellectually hearing them and then knowing them. And what I see a lot of people doing with our seminars is they, are, they think they know God's truth, and yet they've yet to have an emotional experience to release the errors that block them from knowing God's truths. And so it's impossible for them to actually know God's truths in that state. As a result, it's impossible for them to be loving. Mm -hmm. And that's why many of them are still very unloving. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for them to express love and receive love under those conditions. And it's also impossible for them to accept God's truths under those conditions. So it's very, very important that we understand that this emotional experience is essential to our progression. Mm. Without it, no progression can actually occur. Mm. The soul is built to progress only through an emotional experience. And so you're saying, you said earlier that change would be automatic once we have this feeling process. Yes. Are you also saying it would be permanent? Yes. So once, the, once we've actually released the emotional error, which will be an emotional experience every time, and once we accept God's truth on the particular thing that we're experiencing, which will also be an emotional experience every time, mm -hmm. then the truth will be in our soul. It'll be a part of our very being. As a result of that, it's impossible for us to act, act against it without experiencing a lot of pain. And, and so we automatically then tend to operate in harmony with it. And as a result, we, don't, we do things all the time without having to try to do them. Yeah. We are automatically do them, doing them. We're automatically being loving. We automatically know what the truth is under those circumstances. Mm. So it's really important that we understand that it's impossible for us to intellectually receive God's truth without going through some kind of emotional experience and uh, for, for us to understand it. And, and I feel there's still a deep misunderstanding about that in almost everybody that listens to our presentations. They still believe they can go through some kind of intellectual experience of understanding the truth without it being an emotional experience. Yeah. And it's, that's impossible. Yeah. And this is one of the qualities of God's truth. And what I love about it is that it... it in a way, it precludes the intellectual experience. So unless it's an emotional experience, there is no way that we're going to discover God's truths on a particular subject. Mm. And uh, this is a very beautiful way that God's made the universe, that we're going to have to experience the universe to understand the truth rather than just think we know. Yeah, yeah. and try to understand it with our, our thoughts. Our thoughts, yeah. And in fact, there are many, many spirits in the spirit world below the sixth dimension, or uh, well, the sixth dimension and the below, who have no knowledge of the majority of God's truths, particularly the major truths influencing the soul. And the reason why they have no knowledge, even though they have highly developed intellects, is because have, they have denied the emotional experience. They don't understand this particular quality of God's truth and that divine truth has to be felt rather than just intellectually heard. Mm. 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 Okay, um, what if a truth requires us to actually deny emotion or to distance ourselves from emotion? Because we see that a lot, don't we? Yes. Yeah. So, so if somebody is preventing, presenting to us uh, an idea or a concept as the truth or as God's truth, if we have to deny the emotional experience, a positive emotional experience, in order to receive it, then it means it can't be God's truth. It just has to be a man-made idea. Mm -hmm. So perhaps I can give some illustrations of that from a religious perspective initially. Yes. From a religious perspective, uh, many Christians would say that I died for their sins. 
Now, if we look at this from an emotional perspective rather than just an intellectual one, how, how, um, how uh, what's the word, just is it that I'm looking for? Just yeah. is it for one person to die for the sins of many? Like you would never ask your own child who was, who was a good child to die for the sins of the child, your own, even if it was your own child, another child, who had m made some kind of error. You would ask the child who made the error to pay for its own sin. Mm -hmm. So, and in fact, if, if a parent, um, in our current day and age, if a parent blamed one child who did not have sin, let's call it, or yeah. did not commit the wrongdoing, f for the child who did commit the wrongdoing, we would view them as a very unloving parent and a very unfair parent. And interestingly enough, we would probably be quite upset with that parent about the injustice that the parent has perpetrated. Ironically, when it comes to the same reasoning about God, we think that God's going to be unjust. Mm. And that's not true at all. God is never going to be unjust. And in fact, the very thought of it rebels against the emotion of where's the justice? Yeah. for the person who's having to pay for the sins, in, in this case, myself. <laughs> yeah. If I'm meant to have paid for the sins of everybody, if Jesus is meant to have paid for everyone's sins, then where's the justice for Jesus? There is none. Right? And, and therefore, from an emotional perspective, that particular teaching cannot be true. It cannot be God's truth. It has to just be a man-made idea. In fact, Man-made ideas are full of injustice <laughs> and full of, you know, intellectual thinking without actually feeling through the process emotionally. Do you also feel within that common widely held belief that you died for people's sins, certainly there's a distancing from the natural kind of emotion that we would have about how unjust is that. Yep. Um, but also, is, there, is it not a way to distance myself from my own compensation for things that I've done emotionally by saying, actually, I just, a... I just need to believe in Jesus' blood and I don't actually have to deal with that. that yes, thing. I feel people have a justification for it. I don't know if that relates to our topic. but I'm like, sorry, I thought I was just talking about the distancing from emotion that that belief of course it distances Fosters, from, yeah. from emotion. Basically, yeah. it's saying, but it's also distancing the individual from responsibility, from personal responsibility. Sure. So it distance, distances the person individually who believes in that belief from a lot of personal things that they need to go through, taking responsibility for their own life, feeling about it from an emotional perspective, feeling about it from Jesus' perspective, how yeah. would he feel having yeah. to pay for these sins, and feeling about it on a number of levels. And what I'm suggesting is if you feel about the particular doctrine that's being presented to you as God's truth, and it rebels against the feelings, in other words, you, you would prefer to, if, if you were placed in the situation, personally, would you feel it was fair? Mm. And, and if you wouldn't feel it was fair personally, based in the situation, then why is it fair for Jesus? Sure. It's not fair for Jesus, obviously. Yeah. And as a result, it rebels against the emotion. Now, of course, people do have emotions that would cause them to want other people to pay for their errors, yeah. but they're not very just. <laughs> and in fact, in, the, in this day and age, we have a whole set of laws of the land which stop you from actually paying the price for somebody else's wrongdoing, yeah. right? So, you know, if man-made laws do not allow it and then we assume that God's laws do, then we have some pretty amazing think, thinking to adjust because, because the reality is what we're doing is we're, we're assuming that God is worse than the most loving person on earth. The reality is all of God's laws are much higher and therefore more just and more loving than any person's laws on earth. And if on earth we would rebel against the thought of you paying for my wrongdoing, then we should also rebel against it from a religious or a spiritual concept. And that is an indication of how, or, or an example of how we need to look at this particular truth. This particular truth is telling us that unless we feel 
and we feel it's all right. Mm -hmm. We feel it's all in harmony, it's all balanced, it's all ethical. Unless we can feel that in whatever is presented to us, it is not God's truth. Mm -hmm. It's quite simple. Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay, um, just some things from the notes here. You contrast the um, personal truth or a soul's truth with divine truth in yes. terms of emotion. Well, let's so. look at it from a soul's perspective. What, what is the soul's truth? In other words, what is my soul's truth? Well, that, that's my beliefs, my desires, my passions, my emotions, my love principle, you know, the expression of my love. That's my truth, right? From God's perspective, God's truth is God's emotions, God's desires, God's passions, God's love, and, and all of the things associated with God. That's God's truth. Mm -hmm. so, so really it's quite simple. We can, go, we can look at those two things and say, well, okay, for myself, I am going to have to experience some kind of emotional experience before I can absorb truth. And before I can release whatever is the opposite of truth or error within me, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go through the emotional experience. It's going to involve my emotions, my passions, my desires, my longings and the love that's within me to do that. I'm going to have to engage that. From a, from a point of view of receiving God's love, we need to understand that God has emotions, desires, passions, longings and, and love and we have the ability to receive these particular emotions and I am going to have to go through a process of bringing my truth into harmony with God's truth before that can occur. And the way I do that has to be emotional because, the, because God's love is emotion, mm -hmm. an emotion from God. Mm -hmm. And even you're saying that truth is centred emotionally within exactly. God and within us. Yes. So uh, without it being an emotional experience, it doesn't actually exist in reality inside of our soul. That's, that's the truth. It's quite an amazing statement, really, isn't it? That's, That's correct. It's actually saying all of this business, this busyness that goes on up here, uh -huh. unless there's an emotion attached to it or that I'm experiencing, it doesn't even exist. Exactly. It's, it's not even real yet. It's not even real yet. Yeah. It has barely any, if any, effect on, the, on my life. It has barely any effect on how I feel uh, because it hasn't entered my soul yet. It has ba barely any effect on how I feel. And it has barely any effect in terms of what I can transmit to others. Unless I feel it, nobody else can feel it from me either. So I can think that I love them, but if my feelings are such that, that would you know, be opposite to that in some manner, then I don't love them. Mm. You know, the feeling I'm having is a completely different feeling, mm. whatever that feeling might be. When the feelings are true, then you could say, another person would, should be able to then feel that feeling as long as they are open to the reception of that feeling. So just because I love you, it doesn't mean that you will be open to reception of that love. There's got to be an opening in your soul, an emotional experience in your soul for you to receive that particular love. And the same applies to God. Just because God loves you, it doesn't mean that you're going to automatically receive God's love. Unless you feel something, you're not going to receive it. Simple as that. So you can think that you're praying for God's love. You're not going to be receiving it until you're feeling something mm -hmm. for God's love to enter you. And you'll actually feel the emotion as God's love and you'll be overwhelmed with emotion. It will be an emotional experience. You can't avoid it. Yeah. And if you're trying to avoid it, you cannot receive God's love. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to avoid the emotional experience, you cannot receive it. And that's something that we need to understand. We cannot receive God's truth or God's love without there being an emotional experience. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then how do we analyse truth if, from what you've just said, it doesn't really exist if we're just thinking about it? In, in terms of how do we analyse it? What is true? How do we analyse what is well, true? Well, if we look at this particular quality, basically what we're saying is the way to analyse truth is to work through the emotion. Mm -hmm. That's what we're saying. So we're saying that you're going to have to have some kind of emotional analysis of everything that you receive, not just an intellectual one. Mm. And, and if you think about the truths that are established from a physical perspective again, so if we go back to gravity yep. as an example... The emotional analysis of gravity 
usually happens when the child starts walking. So it's an automatic process, basically. The child starts walking, it has a, you know, it has an unbalanced, then it starts making a few steps and then it falls flat on its face. It has a big cry, starts to feel the effect of gravity on itself. And, uh, and then it knows that if it gets up higher or climbs up something and falls down, there's more hurt than it hurts more. So therefore it understands that the higher you go, the more it hurts, right, if you, if you don't obey the law. And, and so you start taking care with the law of gravity automatically. Mm -hmm. And you do it automatically because it's been an emotional experience. So, so it's not something, and it doesn't matter how much a parent says to the one-year-old, you've just got to be careful now how you're walking, you know. It doesn't matter how much the parent tries to explain that to the child. Until the child goes through the personal emotional experience, it will not have a respect for that law of gravity. It will not have a feeling for the law of gravity. It won't have a feeling for its own safety. It won't have a feeling and an experience every time there was pain when it tried to break the law. It won't have any of those things. And that's why every child goes through the experience, even though the parent knows the law of gravity herself or, or himself. Yeah. And so if we look at that, the way to analyse the universe from a larger perspective is to analyse it in the same manner. We look at everything from an emotional perspective as well as a logical intellectual one. And the two have to meet each other. There has to be an agreement between the emotional and the logic. The emotion has to have a logical explanation in it and, uh, and always will with God's truth. Everything is like that with God. So every truth of God always has a resonance with the emotion as well as with the logic. Mm. Yeah. And by the way, if you preclude the logic, then obviously there's a problem as well. So if you're precluding logic in the analysis and you're only having the emotional experience, then that's also a problem. But that's not the main problem that most people on earth have. Most mm -hmm. people on earth prefer intellect and preclude the emotion. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, um, what about if we have emotional errors still inside of us? Can we see truth then? See no, again, it's like the emotional error that exists with the inside of us is basically like a wall. It's an emotional wall that present, prevents the absorption of emotional truth on the same subject. So as we have said in How the Human Soul Functions, which is another set of frequently asked questions that we answered, if inside of our soul we have an error emotionally on a certain subject at a certain time, then at that particular time, on that particular subject, no God's none of God's truth can enter us because all of God's truth on the subject is going to be emotional as well. Mm. And the two emotions are in complete opposition to each other. The emotion of error opposes the emotion of truth. So the only way we are going to be able to absorb the actual truth, no matter what we think in our intellect, the only way our soul is going to be able to absorb the truth is by first going through the process of emotionally releasing the error. Once the emotional release of the error has occurred, now we have the ability to emotionally absorb the truth. Mm. And this is why it's so important to understand this particular principle about God's truth. Because if we think that we can with our mind absorb God's truth, while at the same time retaining an error in the soul about the same subject, then we are just deluding ourselves. And also, it is impossible for us to, under those circumstances, automatically change and automatically do what the truth dictates. Mm. So, so what we need to understand instead is that God's truth is such that it is emotionally felt and experienced. If I'm not emotionally feeling it and experiencing it, then it means that I have an error within myself that is also an emotion that needs to be experienced before that emotional experience of God's truth can enter me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so we need to understand this relationship between how we block, how our soul blocks the absorption of God's truth. And one of the primary ways it blocks it is by not allowing the emotion. That's one of the ways that the majority of people who have heard divine truth for many years the reason why they do not progress as rapidly as they could 
is because they are usually constantly blocking the emotion. Yeah. And when you're blocking the emotion, it is impossible to receive new truth. <clears throat> okay, just a final um, part from your notes here. Mm -hmm. You said eternal growth towards universal truth is only possible when we have emotional intelligence. Mm. What do you mean by this emotional intelligence? Well, emotional intelligence, if I could perhaps define the term as I would express it, mm -hmm. emotional intelligence is your emotions in complete harmony with logic. It's not just emotions expressed without any intelligence or logic. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the emotion of anger to me is not an expression of emotional intelligence. Right? It's an emotion of error that we need to have leave us, so we need to let it flow out of us, and if we have emotional intelligence, we would understand that the anger needs to flow out of us. Mm -hmm. And so therefore we would allow its experience in a safe environment, but we would allow it in such a way where it wouldn't harm another. So in other words, we wouldn't all of a sudden get into a rage and decide to murder somebody. If we had emotional intelligence, we could not do such a thing. And the reason why is because there would be other emotions inside of us that say it is wrong to murder somebody. It's taking away their will. It's taking away their life. It's putting our, them in our control, which is not something that would be in harmony with love. And for that reason, we would automatically feel that it's impossible to go and murder somebody under any circumstance, even if they tried to murder ourselves or murder our loved ones. We would still feel it was impossible if that particular belief was in our soul. So it's very important for us to see that if we had emotional intelligence, what we would be able to do is absorb, we would, we would know that we have to let go of truth, uh, sorry, let go of error in order to receive truth. Mm -hmm. and, we, and the process of letting go of error is an emotional experience. And we would also know that the process of absorbing God's truth is an emotional experience. And if we have emotional intelligence, we would know that. We wouldn't fight the process. Now, what I see a lot of people doing is fighting the process tooth and nail. Uh, they spend a lot of their life avoiding the process with their intellect or fighting that process. That is an indication that there is little emotional intelligence present. We need to develop some emotional intelligence if we're ever going to understand all of God's universal truths. The reason why is, as I've said, up until the sixth dimension, it is, in, it is possible to receive truths intellectually and try to do something different and actually make some changes over long periods of time. However, the soul has yet to really fully change. Mm -hmm. And the only way full change can occur is for the soul to go through the emotional experience of releasing its error so that it has the emotional capacity to understand God's truth. That is a process that will need to be engaged by every single person who ever wants to become at one with God. If we don't engage that process, we are not really displaying emotional intelligence. We might be thinking that we're intellectually intelligent, but the reality is for a person to be happy completely, there needs to be some emotional intelligence. And in fact, once they're happy completely, there'll be complete emotional intelligence, just like their intellectual intelligence will be completed to a large degree as well. Mm. So they'll, at that point, have the ability to absorb new information because there is no blockage emotionally to the absorption because all of the emotional error that prevents the absorption has been released. But first we need to allow this emotional process to exactly yeah. just like the child goes through the experiential process when it discovers the law of gravity we need to allow ourselves to go through the exper experimenting and experiential process to find all of god's truths mm -hmm. all of them mm -hmm. so the, the if you like we're engaging an emotional process of discovering truth that's what we're doing and we need to understand that that's what we're doing. Not, it's not just an intellectual, how does this work? How does that work? It's an emotional feeling about how, how it all works and a knowing as a result, because we've released the error, once the truth enters us, we know how it all works. And it's very, very easy for us then to put it into practice. In fact, it's impossible for us to not put it into practice under those circumstances. 
So, so everyone who's struggling to love has yet to engage that particular process. They're yet to understand that God's truth is always going to be felt. It's always going to be emotional experience. Yeah. If, you, if you're struggling to practice it, it means that there is an emotional blockages of error within that need to be released. And, and why would it be that you're not experiencing this error? Well, that's because you have a belief that the intellect should be dominant over the emotion. And that's not the way God created the soul. So God created the soul as we see it expressed in the child. And you can see the child goes through the experiential process. So it doesn't matter how much the parent, you know, lectures the child <laughs> about something, some kind of danger, sooner or later the child will only discover that danger through its own experience. Mm. Mm. And, and that is the beauty of the way God's made it. If we understood all that from the beginning, we would have less uh, intellectual engagement of what's going on from a, from, in terms of what is truth, what isn't. And we wouldn't have these large debates about what is truth and what isn't. We would have more emotional engagement. We'd be looking at everything that's coming to us and we'd go, OK, I've, I hear that person presenting to me what that person believes is a truth. Let me analyse this truth from an emotional perspective. Does it make sense to my emotional intelligence? not just to my intellect, not just to my logic, because there's a lot of seemingly logical things that are presented that as soon as you allow yourself to analyse them from a heart perspective, from an emotional perspective, you can instantly dismiss them. And that applies to the majority of spiritual teachings on this planet. Yeah. You could instantly dismiss them if you, an you analyse them just through this particular perspective. Mm. Mm.